Hi, in this video we're going to show you how we took down a 70 foot spruce tree in our grounds and how we split it up. Now we are not professionals and this isn't an instructional video, it's more of a public interest video. So we began by notching out a uh, large notch out of the side of the tree where it was already leaning and in the right way so the wind would blow it over this way. This basically aims the tree directly where we want it to go. So in this case we want it to fall to the left. Uh, because that's where there's a spot clear for this tree to fall. So here we have Todd Fleming uh, making that notch a little deeper. Now we clear out the other side and begin notching a little higher so that the um, pieces of the tree that are holding it up will be severed and it will fall into that notch and over to the left. And it took about, it took about 30 minutes However, I think if we were to do this more often, we could get this tree down in about 15 minutes, uh, which is not as fast as a chainsaw, but still uh, the ease of the use of the ax and uh, the lack of needing gas or fixing anything probably outweigh that cost. And here we have the tree coming down. You're gonna see us hustle to get out of the way of that tree coming down. Here it goes. So it fell within five feet of where we were aiming it, so we were really happy with how that came out. So here we are hustling over and looking for the way to get that day uh, to see just exactly where it fell. Next, after taking the tree down, we had to limb it, which means taking all the limbs off at least the top side of the tree. We decided to leave the limbs on the bottom because we needed the tree to stay up off the ground for the next part, which would be removing, or sorry, uh, bucking the tree <clears throat> into 10 foot sections. Todd continues to use his double bitted ax, and I'm using a Mexican machete I picked up while working in Mexico called a uh, corba. It's basically, I think, called a bill hook in English. It's a machete with a curved hook. It works really well for this job. So here you can see we're working our way across the tree. Um, the weather was nice and cool, a little windy, uh, but a pretty comfortable day for working out outside. It's so a kind of a long process, especially because most of the branches on the bottom had died and become uh, seasoned, and so they were actually much harder to cut uh, than we expected. The, the live wood, the green wood, would cut much easier. <clears throat> So once we had limbed the trees, I took a tape measure and I marked 10 foot marks. I, I slashed them, made slashings every 10 feet. And this tells us where we're going to cut the tree using the crosscut saw, uh, which is a two person saw you've probably seen on uh, ESPN3 when they do uh, lumberjack games. <clears throat> now this type of saw is surprisingly uh, effective. I was shocked at how quickly uh, it would cut through uh, a 15 or 16 inch wide uh, trunk. It went through with actually pretty minimal effort uh, even when we started bearing down the sharpness of the tool and the sharpness is really due to Todd taking great care uh, with his tools uh, but we were able to get through uh, all five or six of these cuts in a matter of minutes. It was incredibly fast um, and actually I can really see the appeal of, of doing that competitively. I was also impressed with you know uh, people that would have done this a hundred years ago in lumber camps they must have been pretty tough uh, individuals to do this all day every day. So these sorts of things probably aren't that unusual to you. Um, but what comes next is called ri ri uh, sorry is called riving, uh, which is basically uh, you know how you take a, a log and you split it with an axe uh, to get firewood. Well, I'm basically doing that with a 10 foot section, and obviously it doesn't work as easily as just uh, using one swing of an axe. It's going to take me a little while, and it's going to take at least three of these uh, wedges or these splitting balls uh, to get this 10 foot uh, section to split. So as I drive them in, it starts to make a split down the log. 
and I'm following a natural split that was already there called a check, uh, which is when there's a, a line across the center. Um, I'm just following that natural split. It seems to be the weak spot in the wood. And so as I drive these wedges in, it opens up that crack a little wider, and I just keep uh, working my way down, uh, driving these wedges in. It takes quite a lot of time. Unfortunately, this tree isn't exactly straight, and uh, there's a bit of a, about a quarter turn, uh, maybe a sixth of a turn in the log itself. So my timber isn't exactly as straight as I would like. Perhaps somebody else who's been uh, arriving a lot longer than I have could have kept this line uh, straighter than me. Uh, again, this is my first time doing it, so uh, I'm not a professional or I uh, shouldn't be instructing anyone in doing this. I'm uh, learning as I go. So here I go. Uh, one thing I found is that uh, when it splits, yeah, well, most of the uh, most of the log comes apart. There are uh, little small amounts of wood, like you can see what I'm chopping there, that keep the ends together. So I had to get my axe, and here I'm not actually splitting the log with it. I'm just freeing up those uh, rare bits of wood that stayed between the two different parts. And so as I go down here, I'm just freeing up the split uh, to open up a little easier. As you can see, there's a lot of force on there. I have three wedges driven all the way in, and still the thing won't go all the way. So here we have just about at the end, and now the final wedge in the other end. And now it's completely split, but those little bits are hanging it together, so I split it open the rest of the way with an axe, and finally open. Now I don't have a broad axe, which would be really nice for flattening this out, but I'm taking out some of the rise and run to flatten out this log to make it a little flatter. Uh, eventually I'm going to split it again into quarters and then these will become the posts for the chicken coop that we're going to be building. Obviously I'll make a video of that. You can check out that video later or you can check out our blog and other information at uh, lowtechinstitute.org. Uh, you can find our other videos and our podcasts so please check that out and subscribe to our page. Thanks a lot for watching and take care.